China will soon have the only functioning space station in the entire universe. And when it happens, the US government will look back to its 2011 decision of banning Chinese astronauts from the International Space Station as one of the largest errors in American space history. One of the guiding principles of space exploration is that it should be a collaborative effort from countries and scientists around the world. But the US federal government forbids Chinese astronauts to use the International Space Station, the ISS. The US essentially put China in a corner and gave them no other option but to do the unthinkable, build an entire new space station from scratch. Just a few days ago, China launched the final module of its space station, and as the New York Times reported, this is the latest step in Beijing's effort to eventually surpass the United States in space exploration. In today's video, we're going to examine China's incredible effort to build its own space station and what the future of space will look like with China in command. For the last 70 years, the United States has dominated space and led a worldwide effort to build the ISS. However, the ISS is coming to the end of its life cycle and will be decommissioned and deorbited by 2031. You might be thinking to yourself, why is space exploration so important? We have enough problems on this earth. Why do we need to explore space? Without space programs, we wouldn't have GPS, accurate weather predictions, solar cells, or the ultraviolet filters and cameras and sunglasses. Space exploration has made our life on earth so much better and China wants to dominate the future of space. Under President Xi Jinping, plans for China's space dream have been put into overdrive. In addition to building its own space station, China is also planning to build a base on the moon and send astronauts to the surface by 2030. The Chinese space station is called Tiangong, which translates to Heavenly Palace, and China will soon be the only country in the world with its own space station. But the bigger story here is the difference between America and China's respective attitude towards global cooperation. You see, China built its own space station because it was forced to. For almost two decades, China expressed a keen willingness to participate in the ISS, but in every instance, China's initiatives were blocked by the US government. In 2011, Republican Frank Wolf introduced a bill that is now referred to as the Wolf Amendment. The bill forbids NASA from working with China in space exploration. Despite the ISS being an open and collaborative effort from countries around the globe, the US singled out China and said, you can't come to our space station. When pressed for an answer as to why the US government took this hardline stance, the US government indicated it decided to ban China for national security security concerns, and human rights. Now, this isn't the first time the US government has used human rights as a tool to contain a foreign country. But let's be honest with ourselves. How will banning Chinese astronauts from the ISS do anything to improve human rights? Scientists simply want to work with other smart scientists from around the world and can separate their work from political differences. Let's also be completely honest here. If a country's human rights record is the metric needed for access to the ISS, then American astronauts should be banned as well. But let's contrast America's attitude of containing China with how Beijing responds to international cooperation. China's government has stated that it does not plan to use its space station for global cooperation on the scale of the ISS, and this makes complete sense. China was kicked out of the ISS and was forced to build its own space station from scratch. But unlike the US, China has said it will remain open to foreign collaboration. In 2015, space analyst Miles O'Brien told CNN the idea of US collaborating with China gets shut down immediately whenever it is brought up near Congress, adding that the Chinese Communist Party is viewed as a government that seeks to take our intellectual property. However, Wang Jing, a spokesman for the Beijing's Ministry of Defense, responded that China's government has always advocated the peaceful use of outer space. Unfortunately, this is just the continuation of an alarming trend from American politicians who have become obsessed with containing China instead of building a stronger America. Instead of allowing China to develop and advance as a modern and progressive nation of 1.4 billion people, the U.S. government government has tried everything they can to stop the progress of China. Former President Trump launched a trade war against China. The U.S. government has sought to destroy Huawei, the world leader in 5G technology. And just a few weeks ago, President Biden launched the hardest sanctions against China, cutting off access to the world's most advanced microchips. But this is the major lesson I want everybody to learn. When you cut off China, force them into a corner and try to contain them, you effectively give China only one option, innovate and survive. By trying to contain China, the U.S. government government is weakening itself and at the same time strengthening China. The US is literally forcing China to become smarter, faster, and work even harder to make up for these shortcomings. This is one of the best qualities I learned from Chinese people in all my years of living in China. Whenever a situation seemed impossible and there was no solution, someone would always comment me banfa, which translates to one can't do anything about it. But inevitably, someone else would say woman xiang banfa, which means we'll think of a solution. And this is what China has been doing for the past 50 years. 
others, xiang banfa, and finding a way to innovate and survive. Meanwhile, the future of the ISS is incredibly uncertain. Partnerships and funding are due to run out in 2024, but with the incredible advancements of China's space program, NASA is scrambling to prolong the life of the ISS. Originally set to be decommissioned in just 18 months, NASA recently told the Financial Times that from a technical standpoint, they have cleared the ISS to fly until the end of 2028. But just examine this photo comparing the ISS with China's Tiangong space station, and you will see that the ISS is old, messy, and very much outdated. Soon China will have a supreme advantage. Any future countries who want to send astronauts to a space station will have to ask for Chinese permission. And now China will have the power the US once held and can determine which countries are allowed to collaborate and work together in space. Do you think we'll see American astronauts docking in the Tiangong space station anytime soon? Another huge factor limiting the United States in the future of space exploration is politics. Over the past 18 years, US goals for crude exploration of deep space have changed repeatedly, largely depending on who is sitting in the Oval Office. This is one of the disadvantages of having a two-party state like the US. It's extremely difficult to implement long-term planning as a new president can completely change the course of actions after a new election. Meanwhile, China's government is enforcing its 14th consecutive five-year plan, and Beijing remains committed to the goal of having astronauts on the moon by 2030. So how will this battle of space exploration between the US and China play out over the coming years? Given the strategic value the two nations have placed on their space programs and the political tension that already exists between the two countries, the contest over the achievements in space is likely to intensify. Despite the tension, the US and China must figure out a way to cooperate on some, if not all, issues of the use of outer space. But let's be honest, the US and China rivalry is only going to intensify, and future collaboration between Tiangong and the ISS is highly unlikely. However, China's space station is very attractive to many countries that don't have comprehensive space programs. Look at this logo from the ISS and see all the nations who have sent astronauts to the International Space Station. In the future, we could see a similar logo, but maybe just an image of the Tiangong space station in the center. In conclusion, there really is only one option for this world to progress and solve the most complex issues on our planet, and that is learning to work together. I'm going to end today's video by showing you what happens when the US and China don't work together. It's inevitable that one nation will start stealing technology from another. China has long been accused for stealing American space technology, but a new report from the SCMP exposes a huge twist in the space rivalry, with NASA astronauts stealing the design of a Chinese robot that has been exploring the surface of Mars for the past 12 months. Since NASA can't work with Chinese astronauts, America is becoming a weaker space nation. In recent years, China's space program has achieved several breakthroughs, including quantum satellites, hypersonic weapons, and landing spacecraft on the far side of the moon. All of these projects have been driven in part by new technology not yet developed or used by the United States. To learn more about how containing China is weakening America, I want you to watch my latest video about President Biden's ban on microchips. American microchip companies have seen their stock values plummet by over 70% in the last 12 months, but the United States has proved that they are willing to sacrifice our own American tech companies just to contain China. Click the link above to watch that video, and thank you for spending time with me here on YouTube. I look forward to seeing you all in a new episode soon.